Okay, I'm resp responding to my good friend Deckrash, <coughs> um, who he, he himself replied to uh, another one of my friends, uh, an atheist friend, uh, about a poster that uh, Deckrash very strongly objected to, or at least. Uh, but he did a good job interacting with it, uh, and of course I don't agree with his conclusions. Uh, and so this video is directed towards uh, Deckrash, so uh, better known as Brandon, and I'm going to call him Brandon in the video since I've done it anyway. It's a good thing that's not a secret identity because I would have blown your cover so many times it's not funny. Uh, okay, Brandon, uh, I wanted to respond, but first let me tell everyone else what we're talking about. There's a poster. Uh, about God and about religion, specifically concerning salvation. And it's a picture of, of God standing on a cloud, and he's a an old man with a white beard and a white robe. And he's looking down on the earth and has kind of an angry expression. And he's making a demand, according to the poster. The poster says, Worship me so I can save you from what I would do if you don't worship me. And... That crash took offense at that and said that uh, that was making a caricature of God and making a caricature of salvation, and that it was inaccurate. Um, I, I don't, I don't think he used that word actually inaccurate, but that's basically what I'm getting from what he'd said. Uh, and he went on to talk about how uh, that's not a good picture of salvation, how God created us all in love, and that love is a choice, and in order to be genuine love must be a choice and it must be a genuine choice and uh, and he went on and he talked about that and he talked about how uh, it also made reference to the Garden of Eden and uh, choosing from the tree of knowledge and how we had a choice to love God and instead of loving God we disobeyed and we ate of the fruit and we began to die that very day okay so that catches us up basically for what was said um, if you want to know what Dead Crash said, he said it much better than what I just kind of summarized. Uh, watch his video on the subject because that's the one that I'm replying to anyway. Uh, okay, and so, uh, Brandon, talking about this, and you're talking about the poster, and you said that it had a kernel of truth to it, but that it basically gets it wrong and it makes a terrible error and, and all this. Well, there's a... I don't really know how to start with this because one of the things you criticized, you said that you know this is a caricature of God, and you talked about love, and you said God is so loving. But let me stop you right there because that's, I mean, I have a problem before we even get to that point. It's like you say God created us in love, and that you know salvation is about love basically, and that we need to choose God, and choice has to be genuine, and. You know, for love to be genuine and all that, basically, is what you're saying. Okay, great. But my problem is, is that it doesn't matter how loving God is or how well He's planned it. You know, that's one of the other things you complained about was that things seem so arbitrary. It doesn't matter how loving or how well planned salvation is if it basically boils down to. Uh, okay, so let me. I bumped my desk and so it shook the video. Let me use an example. Let's say. Uh, a very nicely well okay backing up a little bit let me use a different example someone shows up at your doorstop and they're a very mean menacing looking person you know 350 pound looks like a biker or or somebody and he basically you can tell from his eyes he's got it in for you and you're you're looking at him and you're thinking oh you know a bleak curse word uh, and he says basically he's like do what I say, do X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to come back and kill you. And yeah, that's bad. I mean, that's that 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 that'd be a bad situation to be in. Now picture the same gentleman that's cleaned up and he's immaculate and he shows up in in like some beautiful Armani suit or something like that. And he says very pleasantly and very cordially that you know, please do X, Y, and Z. So I don't have to come back and kill you because if you don't do X, Y, and Z, then I have no choice but to kill you, and I would really hate doing that because, uh, you know, man, I, I I just really hate. It gives me no pleasure to to kill you for not doing X, Y, and Z. Now, is ask yourself, okay, 
it was said to you pleasantly. It was well planned, presumably. Uh, it was expressed eloquently, presumably. And how is that any better? I mean, that's the same situation here, except that we're taking it to the nth power and ascribing it to God. And so it doesn't matter how loving God is. And this is why, unless you're a Christian, and you've already, and I'm going to use a phrase because that's exactly how I look at it. I know you'll probably disagree with it. But unless you've already bought into the system, and you've already accepted the presuppositions that God exists, that you're not even supposed to really question His existence, you're just supposed to accept it on faith and accept revelation, and obey that revelation on penalty of not just possible physical death, but definite spiritual death. Uh, and perhaps both, because God's been known in the Bible to do both. Uh, especially in the Old Testament. I don't remember in the New Testament, but okay. All of that. How is it really any better? I mean, it's like I don't know. It, it's just, it's so hard. From a free thinker's perspective, it's like I don't have to accept those presuppositions. In fact, not only am I not obligated to follow those presuppositions, to, to believe them and obey them, but I feel like I'm obligated to question them if they're being opposed upon me. I mean, uh, I, I should question them, and I should question them rationally, and to see, you know, how does that make sense? Uh, okay, so now let's fast forward or change the scenery and let's go to the Garden of Eden and talk about the tree of knowledge. If I'm not mistaken, this tree was in the very middle of the garden along with the tree of life. Uh, seems kind of a strange place to put it if you want people to avoid it if you ask me. Uh, but I don't know. I guess, you know, maybe God's just funny like that. I don't know. Maybe it's part of God's sense of humor. I'm not sure. Uh, and so there the setup of course is is that God has told Adam and presumably Eve I suppose not to eat of the tree and if they do then they're going to die and they according to you they did start dying the day that they rebelled and they ate of the fruit whatever the fruit was uh, traditionally that's an apple I guess uh, but in fact we don't know what it was if it happened at all um, okay great but there's a problem here because you have what, and I don't know if you've heard of this term, you probably have, but it's a term I love ever since a friend of mine taught it to me, and it's called a Hobson's Choice. Uh, and I'm going to read to you the definition from Merriam-Webster online, so I'm not making this up and I'm not flying by the seat of my pants. A Hobson's Choice, and the first definition they give is, a situation in which you are supposed to make a choice but do not have a real choice because there is only one thing you can have or do. Um, that's kind of like their overall definition, I should say. The actual first full definition it gives is shorter, and I like it better, and it says, an apparently free choice when there is no real alternative. Uh, and there's another definition, uh, which is great, but for my purposes, that's good enough. And that's from Merriam-Webster, so it's from some kind of authority. Um, and, you know, obviously there's no point in looking this up in a theological dictionary because I don't think theology incorporates that idea because it doesn't accept... Uh, basically, it's already accepted presuppositions such as God being perfectly good and perfectly rational, even if he's mysterious. Basically, all the presuppositions Christianity already accepts basically rules this out by default. Um, or considers it inapplicable, which, of course, I do not. I consider it very applicable, and as a free thinker, I'm going to apply it. Uh, and so it's a Hobson's choice. I mean, Adam and Eve basically have no choice. To make it worse, of course, uh, not only does God set up the tree within easy access of Adam and Eve apparently but God also permits the serpent to come and to tempt Eve and she gives in and so all of this happened and of course we think well you know this is horrible you know that this all happened and we rebelled against God and all of that happened 
And goodness, you know, I just wish that mm -hmm. Adam could have chosen differently and that life could have been paradise on earth or, or whatever. But hold on, you know, wait a minute. Because you have an additional problem here. If you believe in the omniscience of God, omniscience being defined as, you know, omni meaning all and science meaning knowledge, basically. If you believe that God has all knowledge of all events, past, present, and future is what that means, then you have a real problem here uh, for two different reasons, which I'll get into in a second, because this was planned by God to happen. God started everything knowing exactly what was going to happen and how it was going to happen. Now, you've got two problems here because, you know, the first of all is the idea that it's a, a Hobson's choice. If it wasn't a Hobson's choice, simply by the situation that God set up of, you know, there's really no alternative. It's like you either obey me or you eat of the fruit. And if I appeal to reverse psychology, then it's kind of obvious why, you know, the whole thing went down the way it did. I mean, it doesn't come to us a surprise at all, knowing, you know, even perfect human nature apparently isn't so perfect. Uh, but the, other, the real problem behind it is that with God's omniscience, there really is no such thing as free will because everything is in one sense predetermined, either directly or indirectly, uh, if you believe in absolute omniscience. Uh, if you qualify it and basically qualify it away into well, until the point that it's basically meaningless, uh, like open theism does, well, it's almost meaningless. It has a very limited context. Okay, great. Then I guess that wouldn't be an objection. But it's still, in a sense, uh, a Hobson's choice. <sighs> because what alternative is there really to do? I mean, it's like God could have just not created the tree to begin with. Our God could have created the tree and not created the serpent. And maybe that would have been enough or you know God didn't have to create either one of those uh, knowing and I'm assuming absolute omniscience if you disagree with that Brandon please tell me uh, that'll change my argument a little bit and I'll be honest I may not have much of an argument uh, I, I don't know if you believe in full omniscience or not I, I remember you told me something and I forgot what it was but anyway it, it still seems like a Hobson's choice because God is setting everything up and he's basically saying exactly like the poster said worship me so I can save you from what I'll do to you if you don't worship me it's just that exactly uh, I, I don't really know how else to go about it Brandon because um, you've got a problem here to me the poster is very accurate I mean it's using an angry God because it's trying to make a point. It doesn't matter how nice someone is. If someone threatens you and they say it with a nice smiling face, it's still a threat. Uh, if I tell someone that I'm going to kill them, cut them up into pieces, and eat as many of those pieces as I find edible, then we've got a problem because it doesn't matter how nice I say it. If I say it with a smile on my face, if there's genuine intent behind that threat, it's a threat. <laughs> it just you can't rule out that threat at all. You can't qualify it like Christians try to do and say, "Oh, well, I'm not sure I want to get into that. That might be a separate video." But it just amazes me what what Christians are willing to accept in their deity that they're not willing to accept in people. Uh, and of course, they'll say that it's because God is superlative and God's different in essence and nature from us and granted okay I could grant that theology that that's probably true but why did, would that make it more acceptable because God created us and so God owns us and God can do whatever he wants to with us and if he wants to burn us up in flames then he can I mean why not okay I can accept that but if we're going to do that and you're going to say that that's good because that's basically what you're t saying you're saying that God's plan is Christianity. Christianity's plan is that you choose Christ or you burn in hell. And then you're telling me that that's good. Then that leads me to a very logical question, which is, if that's good, on what basis is that good? 
uh, and that's where uh, the Christian, and like I did as a Christian, you just throw rationality out the window and you go with revelation. It's like, okay, I read it in the Bible, the Bible's okay with it, so I can be okay with it. Okay, great, but as a free thinker, I, you know, I it's not just that I prefer not to do it that way, I can't do it that way unless I became reconvinced to Christianity, which I just don't see happening. So anyway, uh, I'd, I'd like to see my other friend, the friend that you actually replied to, my atheist friend, he's going to make a reply to your reply, and I'm anxious to see what he has to say. Uh, that's Texas Free Thinker, so I'm curious to see what's going to happen with that. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, as always, Brandon, I consider you a great friend. I hope you're not offended by anything I said, and I hope no Christians are. Um, perhaps, you know, I'm all wet, but uh, if I'm wrong, please explain it to me, because um, I, I, like I, I, I'm trying to say, I, I'm not seeing it. Okay, uh, thanks.